Hey everybody, Jim Haas with Blaze Outdoor Products. Today I want to talk about the initial install of your Blaze gas grill, as well as some good practices to follow so you are ensured an enjoyable grilling experience. All right, now we're going to pull the cotter pins out. They're easiest to get to from the back of the grill head. Uh, even if it's on the cart, you can still get to it. If this is going into an island, um, you're going to want to pull these out before it gets inserted in its permanent home. This is the back of the pro grill. So what you're looking for is right down in here. This is going to have two per burner. You want to pull those out. These cotter pins really are just for shipping. Um, but you do want to pull these out. This is the back of a LTE or tradition. One cotter pin for each burner. Once those are out, you can then come in here and freely pull out your burner. It's very important to pull those out for two reasons. One is if you get an optional sear burner, uh, you want to pull this out, slide the sear burner in its place. More importantly for cleaning. Pull this out for cleaning, for easy cleanup. This slot right here is what transfers the gas from one side of the burner to the other. A lot of times this will clog up, only one side of the burner lights. Um, these cotter pins are, you're able to get to them from the front, however, it's a little more challenging. That's why I always recommend doing this before the grill is slid into its permanent home so you can get to the back of the grill head. Pull those cotter pins out. It's gonna save you a lot of stress down the road. If you're installing your grill onto a cart, you're going to now want to secure the grill head. You'll find some provided screws within the packaging, and if you look at near the front of the firebox, just on the inside, you'll see a screw hole that lines up with the hole on the cart. You're going to want to secure that down, and you'll be good to go. Okay, at this point what you're going to want to do is install your flame tamers and heat zone separators. They do come in a separate box and they're often set to the side and then forgotten about or even discarded in some cases. Flame tamers are just going to sit on these pegs right over the burners. And once those are installed and you've peeled off the protective coating on the heat zone separators, they're just going to hang between each burner. These are an integral part of the cooking system as a whole, and you really don't want to overlook these. Um, once all that's in place, put your cooking grates back in place, and you're ready to move on. If you have a Blaze Professional Series grill, it's going to come with a set of hooks. When they're installed, they look like this on each side of the grill head. They do come in a separate envelope in the owner's manual. They get thrown out all the time. It, is, it serves two purposes. One is a hood stop, so like this, and the other is rotisserie rod storage. You can actually store your rotisserie rod on the back side of the grill when not in use. Um, worst case, if you forget those hooks, this lid will just kind of flop back and rest on itself. It's not the end of the world. This gives a little more of a finished look. Just know that those are in there. Once all the physical components are installed in your grill and you're hooked up to your gas line, whether it be natural gas or a propane tank, uh, you're going to want to do a quick leak test as a safety measure before firing it up. The simplest way to perform this leak test, take a bottle of soapy water and squirt it right here where the gas line meets the chassis of the grill. On a natural gas grill, you're going to see a regulator on the back of this chassis, otherwise you're going to see a propane hose and regulator. One more area to perform this leak test is going to be on the individual valves. Easiest way to get to them, pull out the full length drip tray, and you can see them from underneath the grill head. Same technique, bottle of soapy water squirted on there. If you see any signs of a leak, make sure you contact your install or gas professional. Have them rectify that situation. Otherwise, you're good to go. When you light your grill for the first time, Check to confirm that your flames look okay. Obviously, this is uh, my grill, which has been used and heavily seasoned. Um, but basically, what you're going to see are 
flamethrower ignition. You're going to see the burner light. Let's zoom in on this so we can actually see the flame. It'd be nice, right? So you want to see a flame like that. So basically about a half inch, three quarter inch blue flame across the surface of the burner. Um, usually I will tell you out of the box, it's fine. Um, each burner does have an air shutter adjustment on the end. Uh, if your flame has a little too much yellow or orange in it, or if the flame bead looks like it's jumping off of the burner, you want to shut it down, obviously let it cool off, pull that burner out, and you can adjust with the air shutter to get the right mix of uh, gas versus air. Uh, a lot of times high altitudes, this will be affected, um, maybe high wind areas, but usually out of the box, this adjustment is okay. Uh, and I would say it's probably about set to about half, maybe three quarters open when it comes out of the factory. One other adjustment on here that people often overlook or just forget that it's there. Under each knob, each burner has its own low flame adjustment. There's a very small hole under the knob, flathead screwdriver, you can adjust. This one you could do while it's lit. You can actually turn it to low, watch the low flame go up and down uh, to your liking. A lot of times when you go to low, the flame will go out. So you just adjust that low flame up a little bit. Um, and there you go, adjust it to your liking. Each burner has its own low flame adjustment. That's not going to affect the medium or high flame. Uh, but that's a call we get quite often and it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. People forget that that adjustment even exists. We are ready to move on. The final step in the initial setup of your gas grill is you're going to want to season your cooking grates. Uh, seasoning the grates is something that you can't do too much of. Um, I usually do it about every third or fourth time I cook. Uh, you can certainly do it every time if you'd like. You can't over season. It's really going to help prevent the food from sticking while you're cooking on this thing. It's also going to help lock in that flavor every time you use it. It's just going to get better and better. What I would recommend for seasoning your grates, whether it be the first time or the hundredth time, what I use is a vegetable shortening, a folded paper towel. I get a good amount on there. I've had my grill on high now for about 10 minutes. And then with some cooking tongs, just start lightly coating grates. And once you've got everything coated, Keep your grill on high for about an additional 10 minutes to really seal in that seasoning and then you're ready to go. Thank you for taking time to check out this video. I hope the information was informative and will help you to have a very pleasurable grilling experience. Remember life is too short. Eat well and enjoy yourselves. Cheers.